Mikhail Massa Films. Languages, peoples and civilizations are concepts that define our identity and history. Time and space, characterized by the historian Joseph K. Zerbo as the two great masters of man, are crucial to reveal the depths and richness of African knowledge transmitted over the centuries. Africa, the cradle of humanity, is also the cradle of languages and civilizations. Yet, no one is unaware that the history of the continent remains unknown or little known by the international community, which struggles to take fully into account the publications of Africa's general history, an ambitious project undertaken by UNESCO since 1964 in educational systems. Those who dare to venture into the dense tracks of the history of this continent, however, find the very meaning of universal, humankind in its dignity. Melo Enzitu Toko Hosius, author of the publication, takes us through the pages of this book into the depths of the Congo language, the native language of mankind, NLM, illustrating, the primal ocean with bubbles of water representing the two consonants SM per millisecond set in a sort of whirlwind going from the bottom of the ocean and breaking the surface of the ocean waters. His passion for languages and writing, as well as his 25 years of experience in the United Nations system, enabled him to become aware of the cultural richness of the African continent and of the multiple dimensions of its history, which is still occult today, and which could, if one day exposed, illuminate the consciences of peoples for the universal sharing of knowledge. With this publication, Toko Hosius gives us an account of the values of time and space, and contributes to an African time that is always full of challenges, the most critical of which is, more than ever, the integration and mastery of a space filled with bubbling expectations. Edmund Mukala Head of Unit Africa World Heritage Center, UNESCO. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world preamble the title of this book, the most intelligent and powerful language in the world, will seem presumptuous to many. Yet, we think that this book fully deserves this title, since, after years of research on the subject, we have not found any other language that meets the requisites we deem compulsory for any idiom claiming to be the native language of mankind, NLM. Indeed, the sine qua non condition for this qualification, from our point of view and we hope, once you have gone through this book, it will also be yours, can only be that of matching as closely as possible the Creator's thought, expressed in the most sold, disseminated and read book of all time, the Bible. The fact that this language is African, and not even of the civilized northern part of Africa, but of the primitive, central Africa, add its weight of disbelief to the thesis we defend, namely that this language is, without any doubt, the language of God. We know that over the past centuries, there has been a plethora of researchers who have tried, often based on their own language, to put forward the same thesis, whether it be for Hebrew, Arabic, Sanskrit, Mandarin, Latin, Greek or other reputable scholarly idioms. If one of these languages had been able to present the same quality of evidence of its intimacy with the Creator as our language of reference, Kikongo, the whole world would have been aware of the fact and hectoliters of saliva and ink would have been poured out to proclaim Erbi et Orbi the supernatural, metaphysical, divine character of this idiom. The other indispensable condition is that the NLM, native language of mankind, must prove that it has had a great influence on the most prestigious languages of mankind, such as Latin and its derivatives, Roman languages, Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Romanian, and so on. Great therefore is our joy to unveil herewith the mystery of the NLM those who speak our language of reference, commonly called Ba Congo or Congos, ignore themselves the spiritual treasures hidden in their means of communication. In a previous book, Jesus the African, published in 2008, we had the opportunity to emphasize that the Congo nation, whose history before the arrival of the Europeans in the 15th century AD remains a mystery, a kind of hidden face of the iceberg, is a people who deliberately wear a mask. That is why, despite the countless studies that have been made on the Congos, despite the mastery of Kikongo, Congo idiom, by the missionaries from Portugal, England, Holland, Sweden, etc. who crossed seas and oceans with the aim of the most intelligent and powerful language in the world, Christianizing, the Congo Kingdom, the truths revealed in this book remained hermetically shut to them. 
the Europeans were simply blinded by the sense of superiority that their colonial conquests gave them. Through technology, science, and weaponry, they succeeded in dominating the entire world. The openly proclaimed feeling of belonging to a superior race blinded them to the point of refusing to see what was, however, blatantly obvious. That the Congo people and their Bantu kins knew the true God, the God of the Bible, well before their first contact with the conquistadores disembarking from their ships like the Portuguese explorer Diego Sao who discovered Congo five centuries ago. Whilst civilizations considered to be highly evolved, like the Egyptian, the Mesopotamian, the Persian, the Indian, the Greek, the Roman, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Aztec, the Inca, etc., worshipped a multitude of gods, Congos in particular and Bantus in general believed in a single, invisible god, creator of the heavens and the earth. Dr. Oscar Stenström, author of the book Proverbs Ba Congo, published by the Swedish Institute of Mission Research in 1948, will be our witness in this regard. He states, this thesis aims to be a contribution to the study of the culture of the Ba Congo, and a resource for those who want to know more about this very interesting people. In this thesis, the word Ba Congo is used in a global sense and includes all the clans that speak the dialects of Congo. I am sure that a serious study of their culture, to which the richness of their proverbs contributes, will be useful to the colonials, administrators and missionaries, in order to better understand this people and have a more sympathetic attitude towards them. A Belgian missionary who, after working for 20 years with the Ba Congo had come to be considered as a specialist of the Congo culture once said, I am prepared to give 10 years of my life if only I could for 10 minutes perceive the world as perceived by a Congo. In his relations with Congo people, this expert felt as though he were kept outside a closed house. Before actually going into this theme, we deem it essential to warn that the Congo beliefs on the Creator reported here below precede the coming of Europeans with Bible teachings. Bakongo or Congos or monotheistic Congos, like other Bantu ethnic groups, believe in a unique supreme being. Depending on geographical areas, this supreme being is called Nizambi, Nizambi, Njam, Nyamba, Anambi, Enzikoma, etc. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world God is uncreated. He lives in heaven Nizambi Mpungi lives in heaven. No one created him. Nizambi is the greatest, the oldest, we humans are all small and weak. Nizambi is in heaven. Nizambi is the creator of all things. In myths, Nizambi Mpungu is mentioned as the God creator of all things. He created heaven, earth, mountains, rivers, forests. He created wild animals and also created man with clay. The name of God is not taken in vain the name of God. Nizambi, see etymology on page 17, was taboo in the old days and could not be used in everyday conversation. God is the potter who created man from clay Nizambi needed clay, created man and determined the length of his life. Nizambi Wamba, Wula Kavanga. The word Wamba, Boomba, is used to express the manufacture of clay pots. He did everything, like a woman makes her pots. Nizambi also limited human days, he determined the length of life. Death came from disobedience to Nizambi. God is the outfitter of life the sword is the work of the blacksmith, and the fecundity is the work of Nizambi Mpungu. Nisengo Kwa Nagangula, Voi Mawuda Kwa Nizambi Mpungu. God is the creator who regulates the fertility of man, animal God is invisible but still active on earth God is the healer who takes part in the life of man. Out of Nizambi, there is no fertility. Don't look for Nizambi, Nizambi can't be seen. Kudombi Nizambi Ko, Nizambi Kamanakonga Ko. It is no use for man to look for him. We can see his actions, but he himself is invisible. Yet he is not inactive. Often he intervenes in the life of man, he does it more often than we realize. The priest, Naganga, who deals with cures is Nizambi Mpungu. Naganga Ubakanga I Nizambi Mpungu. The priests believe that they treat the body outside, but there is another being who heals the inside and THS1 as Nizambi Mpungu. 
They know that no one can be healed without him. This implies that Nizambi doesn't plant. He is a god this work in secret. When the patient is sleeping, confirmed by the proverb Nizambi ku tulu kabukilonga, Nizambi treats in sleep. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world god is almighty. We cannot refuse him anything if Nizambi asks, give. If he asks for your foot, give it. Nizambi cannot be denied anything. Nizambi Koloma Koko, Navani. Koloma Kulu, Navani. Kadi Kayamunwanga Lekwako. God is Almighty. He does what he likes, because he surpasses all NKISIII and any man. No one can do anything to God. He is supreme. If he asks you something or drops something on you, you only have to submit to his will. God is omniscient God is the cause of everything God is the supreme ruler all submission is due to him Congo submit to God's will, saying, Nizambi wanted it that way. There's a life after death God is merciful and good Nizambi knows the snake's feet. Malu ma nioka Nizambi zei mo. Nizambi knows everything. He knows the secret things of everyone and everything. From him comes all wisdom. Nizambi is the cause of all the inexplicable events in nature. When the astonished Congo individual notices that the sun stops lighting in the middle of the day, he, she says, now Nizambi has closed his eyes in the middle of the day. This is their conception of the eclipse. When the eclipse is over, they say, now Nizambi sees again. Another saying shows that Congos believe that Nizambi is the true ruler in charge. Nizambi lives in heaven but he also visits his people on earth and he knows everything about them. When, suddenly, a spontaneous silence occurs during a conversation, Congos would say, Nizambi passed over, Nizambi Vyakele. Death is not the end of everything. There is a life after death and the Congos say, I will die, but Nizambi remains, I will go to heaven. If a parent dies and sadness is great, they complain, Nizambi gave, Nizambi has taken back. Nizambi is good, kind, merciful. Therefore Congo people wish God's blessing with these words, let Nizambi make you healthy and strong. They depend on him. If Nizambi had not been, I would have died. Yes, if Nizambi gives me health, I will come. God writes everything revenge belongs to God the most intelligent and powerful language in the world Nizambi has his own writing, let God write, not us. Congo people believe that the lines on our hands or elsewhere on our bodies are Nizambi's drawings or writing. He wrote his ways, Nzila Zandi, on our hands and on our backs. He walks on these tracks on our body. Nizambi has the power to punish all those who do harm. This is Nizambi's concern. Nizambi takes revenge. From the aforementioned quotes comes out a certainty. The God described by the Swedish missionary according to the testimony of Congo wise men who based themselves on ancestral tradition, does not differ in any way from the God revealed in the Bible. It is understandable that confronted upon their arrival to the Congo's material decadence, even the most open and most progressive Europeans could not dare understand and say the truth, i.e. that their mission was less to teach the natives what they already knew about faith than to raise the latter up to the level that Europe had achieved over two millennia to make the Christian religion the first religion in the world, a structured and organized church, rituals and dogmas based on holy scriptures, the life of saints, put forward, a sovereign pontiff, as far as the Roman Catholic Church is concerned, erected as the representative of God on earth, etc. Our diagnostic, however, is that the Europeans have sinned out of intellectual laziness. All they needed to do was to compare Congo's beliefs to those of civilizations deemed more advanced than the Bantus, we are convinced that their minds would have been thus illuminated. To make ourselves better understood, we will once again call for a witness our good Swedish missionary, Dr. Oscar Stenström. We shall make a backward projection over time and compare Congo beliefs about cosmogony with those of other peoples before the latter have been imbued with any biblical knowledge. By putting facts in appropriate context, in an effort of imagination, we visualize Dr. Stenstrom standing 2,000 years ago in the midst of the Areopagus like Paul, facing the Greeks. He would have been confronted too. 
Greek polytheism it is no secret that before conversion to Christianity, the Greeks believed in a multitude of anthropomorphic gods, designed in the image of man, with human bodies, feelings and defects. What these deities had more than men was immortality, and the capacity to change their appearance and to direct nature. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world these gods could be invoked in various aspects depending on the place, the worship and the function they performed. Thus, there was the main god of the Greek pantheon, Zeus e Oranos, considered to be the father of all the gods, Polius, guardian of the political order, and of the walls of the city, Horkios, guarantor of oaths and pacts, Ketesios, protector of the property, Herkios, guardian of the enclosure, Xenios, protector of the hosts and foreigners, Keriunos, guardian of lightning. In addition to the above, there were other figures in the Greek pantheon. Among them, Aphrodite, Apollo, Poseidon, Hestia, Ares, Artemis, Hera, Athena, Hephaestos, Hermes, Hades. Carried afterwards to the Latin world, the good Dr. Stenstrom would have had to fight against the Roman polytheism. The Romans, in fact, worshipped a large number of quite special gods. The latter could have a topical power linked to a place, such as Jupiter Capitoline, from Capitol Hill in Rome, or Zeus Olympian, borrowed from Greece. In addition to this topical power, the Roman gods also had a functional specialty, like Mars, the god of war. The Romans also divinized the stars. This accounts for the great importance of astrology in ancient times. In addition to the gods mentioned above, let us note the existence of other gods such as Janus, formerly a Latin king who presumably welcomed Saturn into Earth. Janus thus became the god of the openings and protector of the gates of Rome. There were Kronos, the god of time and circumstances, Quirinus, the farmer's protector, Jupiter, Faunus, herd protector, and Vesta. This list is not exhaustive. Egyptian polytheism Dr. Stenstrom is now in ancient Egypt. In complete confusion, he faces the numerous and strange Egyptian gods wearing unexpected costumes and attributes. The ram-headed Amon, Anubis, with jackal head, Aton, the solar god, a tomb, god of Heliopolis, Bastet, the cat-headed goddess, Bees, the monstrous and grimacing dwarf, Jeb, the god of the earth, Hapi, the divine personification of the Nile, Harpocrat, son of Isis and Osiris, Hather, the goddess of love, represented as a cow, Horus, the god of heaven, Emotep, the divinized architect of the pyramids, Isis, wife and sister of Osiris and mother of Horus, Noam, the god in charge of the floods of the Nile, Khonsu, the son of Amon and Mut, falcon-headed, Mayat, the goddess of peace, truth and justice, Montu, the god of war, the equivalent of Mars in Latin pantheon, Mut, with a vulture head, Neith, the divinity of the delta, Nakabit, the goddess protector of Upper Egypt, Nephtis, sister and wife of Seth, goddess protector of the dead, Naut, divinity of heaven, Osiris, inventor of the most intelligent and powerful language in the world agriculture and religion and sovereign of the underworld, Wajet, goddess Cobra, protector of the lower Egypt, Ptah, creator of the world by thought and word, Ra, god of the sun, Sekhmet, with a lioness head, warrior goddess of the desert, Seth, another warrior god, Sobik, with a crocodile head, who symbolized water and fertility, Taweret, a mixture of hippopotamus and woman, protector of pregnant women, thought, the god of scribes, inventor of writing and language, holder and master of knowledge, often represented as baboon. As can be seen, the good Dr. Stenstrom would have been bewildered in front of such overflowing imagination destined at creating the strangest of gods. And yet these peoples had reached, according to human criteria, the peak of material civilization, while remaining in the darkest horizons in terms of knowledge of the true creator. We shall not mention here the countless gods worshipped by the Indians, the Incas, the Aztecs, the Chinese, the Sumerians, the Babylonians, etc. Some of them still worshipped nowadays. We just wish to draw the reader's attention to the fact that the belief in a single god encountered by Europeans in the Bantu geographical area was a very exceptional fact that should have called them to wonder as to who were actually these people, primitive in material progress and so evolved in the knowledge of the sole and unique creator. As far as Congo people are concerned, 
It is most surprising that the good Dr. Stenstrom, while having acquired a true mastery of Kikongo, has not been able to see the hidden face of the moon, i.e. the great mystery we are revealing in the following pages. This book, the most intelligent and powerful language in the world, is in fact another apocalypsis, this word being considered under its true IV etymology which is, uncovering, unveiling, revelation. Numerals in Kikongo are sacred, sanctified to count, in all the languages of the world, is a banal, ordinary exercise, with no purpose other than to determine the number of cattle one owns if he, she is a shepherd, or the millions of euros or dollars carefully kept in a safe in the bank if one is a wealthy entrepreneur or merchant. Or even the three meager pennies one has in his, her pocket if in a precarious predicament. Except in a language so powerful that this insignificant exercise turns to reading on the Creator's lips, establishing a link with the thinking of the Most High. This metaphysical symbiosis between a language and the Creator of heaven and earth is a scientific and biblical fact that we strive to demonstrate in this modest book. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world The first chapter of the Bible's first book, Genesis, tells the story of creation in a very simple, even simplistic way, according to some, within the reach of understanding of a small child. However, beyond this neophyte reading of this narrative, there is another one, deep and mysterious, which conceals a real treasure in hermeneutic. This African Bantu language is one of those which the German linguist von de Veld marveled at after studying them at the end of the 19th century. He then suggested that Bantu idioms seem to be the common denominator between all other languages of the world. Another prominent linguist, A. Meye, quoted on page 78 by the researcher Jean-Claude Emboli in his monumental, Origin of African Languages, in Larmatin Publishing House, Paris, adds, but right now, one has the impression that all African languages are based on the same original language. If one admits that this language is the NLM, native language of mankind, its influence should of course not stop, to paraphrase Meye, with the Negro languages of Africa, but extends to the European languages, as stated by yet another linguist, Mr. Martinet. The discovery, some 200 years ago, that most of Europe's languages, including Greek and Latin, derived from the same older language, was able to fill with satisfaction Germans and Scandinavians whose native talks were thus placed on an equal footing with the classical languages of the West, page 82 of the book cited above. The intuition of these eminent scholars is amply confirmed by the English scholar Hallman Bentley in his masterful dictionary and grammar of the Congo language published in 1887 in Sao Salvador, today Mbanziv Congo, a city recently listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In this respect, we are convinced that the language of Mbanza Congo will likewise be distinguished one day as a treasure of the cultural heritage of humanity and recognized as the NLM. Hallman Bentley, sent into the heart of Africa by the BMS, Baptist Missionary Society, expresses his astonishment in the preamble of his book of reference, as we progressed in our work, new surprises awaited us, observing the richness, flexibility, precision, subtlety of idea and beauty of expression that were trickling into this language. We then discovered that Congo people have such a precise and reliable idiom that the ambiguities, falsehoods and illogical perversions frequently encountered in European languages are impossible in the Congo dialectic. Quote. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world it is interesting to note that the Congo language is spoken today mainly in four countries in Central Africa, Angola, Congo Kinshasa, DRC, Congo Brazzaville and Gabon. Our maternal grandfather, Antonio Freitas, was the pioneer of photographic art in Leopoldville, the name during colonization of Kinshasa, the capital of the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. As little kids, we were amazed to see how, by pouring out into a vessel a mysterious product called Developer, the ghost faces and silhouettes printed on the silver film suddenly took their real appearance, thus allowing to recognize a person, a place, an object immortalized by the great artist that was our grandfather. The Congo language is, in this respect, a developer of the real Decalogue encountered from the very beginning of the Bible. Decalogue is a Greek word consisting of two words, deca, ten, and logos, word. In fact, the Creator spoke ten times in His creative work. 
The ten, God said, by virtue of the thaumaturgy power conferred upon them, did not return to the Creator, without effect, without having fulfilled His will and accomplished His designs. V therefore, each, God said, of the first chapter of Genesis corresponds to a concrete realization by the Creator. These ten words, this Decalogue, are found in the, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten, of Kikongo, which are mentioned Herebolo, one. Mosi, Masi, two. Zol, Zole, three. Tatu, Tatu, four. Yala, Ya five, Tanu, Tanu, six, Sambanu, Sambanu, seven, Sambuadi, Ensambuadi, eight, Nana, nine, Vua, Voa, ten, Kumi, Komi. Introduction The most intelligent and powerful language in the world One of the most beautiful pages of the Bible is undoubtedly the preamble of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. V. The Spirit reveals to the beloved disciple of Christ, John, that all that exists has been created by the Word of God. This is confirmed by many other passages of the Bible in the Old and New Testament. So as my Word, which comes out of my mouth, it does not return to me without effect, without having fulfilled my will and fulfilled my designs. It is through faith that we recognize that the world was formed by the Word of God, so that what we see was not made of visible things. If everything was created by Word, it logically means that the Creator has a language, and as much as our poor human intelligence can apprehend it, which He bestowed to the first man and woman, and that this original language, by the Creator's virtue of being eternal, still exists today. In the following pages, we will demonstrate that, Truly, this language exists. The evidence that we are providing to this effect is of scientific unbreakable rigor. We know that we are here igniting a controversy which will certainly inflame the minds. We can but confess that the above thesis is at first glance pure madness. However the scripture declares that, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong X, for the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. She we are convinced that at the end of this book, the wise men of this world will be confused by the unparalleled spiritual dimension of this African language, which paradoxically is considered by linguists as an insignificant dialect. The title of this book, The Most Intelligent and Powerful Language in the World, finds its justification in the fact that the idiom we are referring to fits like a glove the Creator's thought. The ineffable truths that all humanity was able to discover only by taking knowledge of the Bible are spread out in Kikongo in such a simple and ingenuous way, whilst at the same time being so complex that one can but reach the following conclusion, only a higher intelligence which pre-existed the the most intelligent and powerful language in the world creation, could have inserted these truths into that African language, leaving the own Congos unaware of the fact, providing thus indisputable proof that those who speak it are not its creators. It is then logical to state that the Congo language descended from heaven, from the Most High. Consequently Kikongo provides evidence that consonants hidden truths there is a creator. This creator is not any deity or any god but the creator as revealed in the most sold, most bought, most read book in the world, in other words, the Bible, the people who practice this language can only be the true people of God, heirs in straight line of the prophet who, inspired by the Creator, wrote the Pentateuch. Moses, of course, is that prophet. It should be recalled here that in the writing of ancient languages, Semitic languages mainly, only consonants were represented. Ancient Hebrew in particular was consonantal. The vocalization of Hebrew only appeared very later through vocal consonants and diacritic signs, in order to facilitate the reading and understanding of the sacred texts. Thus Boker Tov, meaning, good morning, in Hebrew, was originally written BKRTV. We have chosen to frequently use the consonantal skeleton of words for the sake of our demonstrations about the concordance between Kikongo and the Bible. Let's start by analyzing in depth the first chapter of the Bible in the light of the Congo language. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world in the beginning, 
God created heaven and earth to speak equals to create. Let's first analyze the verb to create. In Kikongo, to create is sima written consonantly sm. To speak is vova, tela, kamba, samuna. However, for the purposes of our demonstration, we will only keep samuna. It is easy to see in sam una the consonants smn. It should be noted that one of the characteristics of Kikongo and most of the Bantu languages derived from the latter is that all words are grammatically biliteral, which means that they usually contain two consonants forming two syllables. Examples Vo VA, Tun Da, Zin Ga, Ta Ta, Ma Ma, Mwa Na, Sam Ba, Lan Ga, Ka Na, Go Lo, Le Ka, Lum Bi Yu, Fu Ku, Mui Ni. Zu Lu, Mo Yo, etc. Hence the inference that when we encounter words with more than two syllables, this means that they wear affixes, namely either a prefix or a suffix and even both appendices. Examples of a prefix, Ki Angelazo equals the English language, the language spoken by English people. Ki Imputu, Portuguese or the language spoken by Portuguese people. Examples of a suffix, the prefix ki, which belongs to the fifth class out of the 15 classes of Kikongo words, is the prefix which usually designates a language, a patois, a dialect. Tondakana. What deserves to be rewarded? Which calls for gratitude? Akana is the suffix in charge of changing the meaning of the verb tanda, to thank, to be grateful. Yal umuna equals spread out, expand, extend. Umuna is the suffix used to extend the meaning of yal a to rule, to organize, to reign over, to dominate. This verb, as we will demonstrate later on, is closely linked to ya. Number 4 in Kikongo let's sum up. The prefix is the appendix that precedes the word, while the suffix is the extension of the word. In this respect, Kikongo is the champion of this linguistic artifice, particularly in the conjugation of verbs, which can be enriched by more than 20 affixes each bringing a subtle nuance to the meaning of the verb. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world to revert to the two terms selected for our first demonstration, we point out a perfect match between the verbs, create, and, speak, i.e., sema equals to create sm equals sm, considered under their skeleton consonants. Sima equals to speak this verb in this sense is currently only in Swahili, another Bantu language. In Kikongo alone remains the extensive form of this verb, the Samuna mentioned above. Therefore the revelation, which could only strike the human mind under the divine inspiration, that speaking is equivalent to creating, is a logical deduction in the Congo language, made evident by the match SM equals SM. This simple paradigm places this African language in another category, that of an inspired language in similarity with the book Kikongo uses as a developer, namely, the Bible. The creator equals the word from the verb sema, create, derives the noun, semi, creator. Normally this word is nasalized and should be written in semi. However, we have generally chosen to replace the letters, m, and, n, representing the nasals with the apostrophe sign. This in order to highlight the equivalences. The fact that the Congo people were impregnated with biblical culture, even before getting the Bible, through the European missionaries who only came to Congo starting from the 15th century, is self-explanatory. From our analysis it is an extraordinary fact to see that a word is essential, in any language, as, father, genitor, is made in Kikongo by the first syllable of, semi, the creator, se or e sexy equals father. In other words, the father is the, lesser, creator compared to God, the great creator. It is as if, in English, the monosyllable, fa, is the father, the genitor, and, father, the, creator, God. This concept, highly spiritual, is clearly confirmed by the word of God, all have one father. Is it not a single God who created us? Chapter 2, verse 10. In the same line, we suspect that the Latin word esse, to ask's prophet Malachi, don't we be, originates from say essay in Kikongo. Semi equals the seed the most intelligent and powerful language in the world the parable of the sower in Matthew chapter 13 and Luke chapter 8 is very famous among Christians. 
we consider it as a wink from the Lord, a kind of clickable link designed to build a bridge between the Bible and the most intelligent and powerful language in the world. Indeed, the seed referred to in the parable is the Creator Himself, the sower being Christ. The link between semi and the seed as follows semi equals the seed as the Creator Himself, whilst the sower is Christ who sows. Semi equals the seed equals the logos his heavenly father's word. The conjugation suffix of sema is seme, in which, it is obvious, gave the Latin word semen, seed. From now on, whenever we deem it useful, we will add to semi the attribute, the seed, by virtue of the biblical passage which proclaims that the seed is the living word of God, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23, establishing the following equivalence, from the verb sema, Samuna derives, Samu, N-S-A-M-O-U, which means, word, news, announcement, prophecy, oracle. Latin, still recently the most prestigious European language due partly to the fact of having been chosen as the sacred language of the Roman Apostolic Church, Catholic, bows down before Kikongo, the master. Otherwise, how to explain the many borrowings of Kikongo words to feed Latin? This was the subject of one of my books. Les Racines Bantuais du Latin, the Bantu Roots of the Latin Language, published in Paris, France, in 2008 XIV. Sermo equals the word the link between the Congo word. Samu and the Latin word sermo is obvious in view of the affinity in the morphology of the word and its meaning. Samu and sermo mean both, the word. For example, the Latin language is designated in two ways, lingua latina or sermo latinus. In this respect, the Lord's famous Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, finds its true origin. The word sermon does not come from the Latin sermo, as all etymological dictionaries say, but from Kikongo Samuna who, by the way, establishes a direct link between creation, sema, nsema, and word, speech, samu, nsamou. Some readers, no doubt, will be tempted to explain this lexicological relationship between Kikongo and Latin, arguing that it is Kikongo, not Latin, the borrower. This argument cannot resist scrutiny for two main reasons, 20. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world, uh, Kikongo is by far much older than Latin. Indeed, the archaic Latin began to expand only around the 3rd century BC, while the works of professors Sheikh Anta Diop and Theophilus Obenga establish a genetic kinship between Bantu idioms and ancient Egypt, more than 3000 BC. b. Establishing a link between both languages supposes that Congo people were in contact with the Romans when the latter still spoke Latin, centuries and centuries before the era of the conquest of the African continent by the Europeans in the 15th century AD. Moreover, it must also be assumed that the Congo people had acquired so great mastery of Latin that they were able to borrow words from that idiom in such a clever way. This being said, the only plausible explanation for these linguistic acquaintances is that there existed sustainable contacts in antiquity between the Etruscans, likely ancestors of Latin people, and the people who then spoke a language today called Kikongo and whose original name remains to be determined. The disturbing point for classical history teachers is that these contacts were established outside the borders of Africa, probably beyond the waters of the Mediterranean Sea. The hypothesis is that the current Congo nation is made up of descendants of people who reached the peak of civilization in antiquity and who, under divine command, migrated in a north-south movement towards the navel of the earth, i.e. Central Africa, where the original man and woman were created. While we have some ideas about this famous migration, it is of yet not possible to determine with accuracy when it occurred. Zambi equals creator of creators each page of the Bible, with a few exceptions, contains either the word, God, or eponyms and pseudonyms evoking the same concept, Yahweh, Jehovah, Yah. While in European languages it is easy to demonstrate the pagan origins of the peoples practicing French, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, English, German, etc., we must say that it is the other way around as far as Kikongo is concerned. In fact, in this language, Zambi God derives, quite logically, from the word creator, namely, Zambi is rooted in the word semi. 
Zeus equals Deus equals God in French and Portuguese. By way of comparison, the word God originates from the Greek pantheon, specifically from the pagan god Zeus. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world in Kikongo, the emphatic, sublimated, magnified character of a word is rendered by the introduction of a nasal, which can be heavy or light, which constitutes a kind of phonetic amplifier. Let's take two examples to illustrate this. Titi, meaning grass, herb. Magnified by a heavy nasal it becomes NTI, a tree, NSI, country, nation, becomes NZA, all countries, the whole world. Here the letter, S, which, phonetically, is deaf, has taken emphasis by mutating into, Z, which is sonorous. According to the same principle, the first syllable of the word, semi, the creator, that is say became Naza while the second syllable, that is MI, mutated into MBI with the addition of the labial, B, to strengthen the labial, M. The same phenomenon is encountered with the English word's number numeral. Zambi is therefore, semi, the seed multiplied infinitely, in other words the creator of creators. So in Kikongo, no reference, no reverence are made to a deity of the type of Zeus but a proven relationship with the most fundamental concept of God encountered in the Bible, that of the creator of all things. For thus saith the Lord, the creator of the heavens, the only God, who has formed the earth, who has made it, who has strengthened it, who has created it so that it may not be deserted, who has formed it so that it may be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. XV as can be seen, every time the word, Zambi, is spoken in Kikongo, the word, creator, must be heard in echo, while in French and Portuguese, for example, every time the word, du, or, deus, is spoken, Zeus must be seen in watermark. But that is not all. Let's go up one level. The art of spelling is to know how to write respecting a set of rules and practices defined as a standard. This means that academics set the standards for writing a given language. As heir of the Congo Kingdom, we may choose not to conform to the rules dictated from outside, by exogenous people. Therefore, instead of writing, Zambi, God, with, Z, we can opt for, S, like, case, in French or, cause, in English which, while pronounced, cas, cuz, are nevertheless written with, S. In writing, Zambi instead of, Zambi, four sublime and subliminal messages appear, Zambi, Sambi Samba, prayer, Sabbath the only one to whom prayer, in particular, that of the Sabbath day, is destined, at the same time, we must underline the fact that in Hebrew one of the Creator's attributes is, Sabaot, Zambi, Sambi, Sambu, blessings, the only one from whom we receive our blessings and sanctification. The most intelligent and powerful language in the world, Zambi, Sambi, Sambuadi, seven, the only one who possesses seven the beginning Muna Lubantiku or Munetika. Let's use the consonant structure of Mosi to make our demonstration clearer. Mosi equals MS. Semi equals Mosi SM equals Ms. The above exercise links us to some texts of the Bible, spirits, see Revelation chapter 4 verse 5. Zambi, Sambi Sami, Sami my father, fusion of two words, namely say, father, and Amy, my. All the Bibles translated from the European languages render in Kikongo the first word of the Bible, the Bereshit of the Hebrew language, as follows, it is a pity that nowhere is found the more spiritual way of translating, in the beginning, into Kikongo, that is, Kumozi whose relationship with, Kam Menser, in French, to begin, is obvious. Indeed, the beginning, the number, one, in Kikongo is Mozi, Masi. This is the first time that we meet a metathesis, a characteristic feature of Semitic languages, sometimes encountered also in European idioms, i.e. the reversal of the letters or syllables of a word. In Arabic, for example, the metathesis is used to emphasize a word, a concept. Kabir, great, becomes Akbar, the greatest. Dur in French, tough, becomes rude. On the above basis, it is easy to see that the words, creator, and, beginning, are equivalent in Kikongo, using the metathesis system. I am God from the beginning, and no man shall deliver from my hand. I will act, who will oppose it? Isaiah chapter 43 verse 13. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1 verse 1, He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, The words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Revelation chapter 21 verse 6, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Revelation chapter 22 verse 13. God is one, He is unique the most intelligent and powerful language in the world by the equation established between, semi, the Creator, and Mosi, one, the Congo language proclaims the Creator's uniqueness, the fact that He is one, that there is no other, a concept that took centuries to penetrate the majority of pagan cultures in the world in ancient times. How many faithful of the true God, revealed in the Bible have not been persecuted killed?